My journey as an artist began with my training as an architect. And I think that that brings a certain spatial awareness to my stuff. And I think a lot about how people approach my work and how they interact with it at various scales, large and small. I'm Michael Skura. I'm a glass and light artist. I discovered glass. I was really drawn to it as a material for its lighting effects, having reflection and refraction and transparency and translucency. It has a lot of very different qualities in the same material. This exhibition has been a about a year a year long endeavor so far. About six months of ideating and putting together the project in the space, brought all the pieces in, uh, bringing the Epson projectors in. I didn't even think of glass in terms of the light that it would produce. And I stumbled by accident on a beam of light that happened to be coming through a crack in the window and hit a particular piece at an exact time of day where everything else was dark. And there's, there's sort of an explosion of light that happens and tendrils are kind of produced through it. That was the moment a shift happened for me in terms of what I felt the art was. The art became the light. At the very first onset of it, we tried using lighting, and there was no way to control the images enough. And when we just put white light on them, even if we were using like a tight beam flashlight or something, it wasn't as intriguing, and we couldn't get any movement out of it. Michael approached me to talk specifically about how to make his sculptures interactive, how to bring them to life. We both kind of had the same uh, vision of how technology and sculpture could be merged. So the inspiration for the show is much more about seeing light in the context of darkness. There's over a thousand pieces of, of glass that are video mapped and, and lit in various ways using stage lighting technology and video 3D video mapping. And ultimately that's what kind of produced all of, all of this work. It is kind of a small community of uh, creators who are embracing projection technology to use them in these unique applications. So when I heard about this particular project and Michael's vision, I kind of knew that they were going to lean towards something that was in about horsepower or color accuracy, but sort of as a means to activate his vision and bring those applications to life or help him tell his story in ways that otherwise he couldn't tell. Overall, what I'm really excited about them with is the ability to have so many projectors in a space and hit from many, many angles at once without the ceiling getting cluttered with tons of ugly projectors and cables. They disappear into the sky. They're bright and it works perfectly for what we're doing. This installation is going to be in place for a few months, so we need it to be able to start up and shut down on its own. We need it to be very hands-free. Um, so we choose technology that will accomplish that goal. My focus on light and darkness my focus on the little magic kind of rainbows that happen through chromatic aberration, just distortion of, of light. It's an opportunity to slow down and just experience light. The inspiration is really kind of at the, at the core of what all of these pieces are about, which is to slow down and notice. I'm interested in the fact that I used technology to be able to help you to slow down. There's something full circle about that. Looking to the future with it, it's becoming so much easier to do these things. As I'm seeing more and more automation and more and more computer control of it, it's just allowing us to create better things. In order to create an art that stands out, to me it's really integral to use technology in such a way that can bring your attention to it, uh, can enhance your senses, can help you actually have a multi-sensory experience if you wanted to. And I think to me that's just a natural progression of where things are heading. As a glass blower, I'm not afraid of using technology just to be afraid of it. I don't avoid it for that, just for the sake of avoiding it. I also don't use technology for the sake of using it. I think there'll be people that see it as a tool and there'll be people that use it and express it for, for what it is.